I want to say out of the gate, I'm not a fan of the politics of trolling. And both sides these days tend to do it. Um, While I'm not a fan of it, I also understand it. And in this case, with the border and the insecurity of the border, I do think to a large degree, people like Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis, who are busing illegal aliens or flying them to blue states, are in a large part justified because the official position of the Biden administration is that the border is closed. Consequently, they're not stepping up a budgetary help to places like Florida, Texas, Arizona, and the like that are being overwhelmed by illegal aliens. The highest numbers in U.S. history are happening right now. The Border Patrol is logging 8,000 migrants entering the U.S. every day. Joseph Simonson at uh, the Washington Free Beacon has this story. Immigration officials are reporting the highest ever daily number of migrants entering the United States along the southwestern border. Border Patrol officers are logging roughly 8,000 migrant encounters a day, the highest daily number in U.S. history, the communications show. Such a massive surge in migrants has left agencies such as Custom and Border Protection scrambling to implement new processing systems. The record number of migrant encounters highlights the little progress the Biden administration has done in solving it. Uh, Townhall.com put together this. Kamala Harris with Chuck Todd on Sunday and an illegal immigrant outside her house on Monday. Greg Abbott, after Kamala Harris said the border was open and secure, put migrants on a bus to Washington, D.C. and dropped them off outside her house. Now, there are a couple of things you need to know here. Contrary to what the Democrats are claiming, none of these people are forced to go. They want to go. In fact, they're given cities they wish to go to. Many of the cities that are most outraged by this, I find it deeply ironic, went out of their way during the Trump years to declare themselves sanctuary cities. And now they wish to give no sanctuary to the illegal aliens. Listen to this montage. Uh, put together, I shouldn't say montage, just the, the cuts between Kamala Harris with Chuck Todd on a Sunday and an illegal alien outside Kamala Harris's house yesterday. We're going to have two million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. And Vice President Harris uh, said that the border is closed. Is the border closed? Do you believe that the border is closed or is it open? It's open, not closed. The border is open. The border is open. Do you believe that all the migrants believe that the border is open? Yeah, everybody believes that the border is open. It's open because we enter, we come in. We enter, we come in, it's open. That's an actual illegal alien who crossed into the United States who says the border is open. There's something else you need to know that's being left out of the media narrative when they're upset. Ron DeSantis has sent illegal aliens up to Martha's Vineyard. You know, up in Martha's Vineyard, they're all tearing up their signs in the front yard. You know, all the good progressives in Lily White, Martha's Vineyard, they've had the signs in this house. We believe black lives matter. Women's rights are human rights. No humans illegal. Science is real. Love is love. Kindness is everything. They're replacing them with no trespassing signs. Here's a story you're not going to hear anywhere but here probably. This is from April 15th, earlier this year. The White House has quietly resumed its after-dark charter flights of underage migrants to a suburban airport north of New York City after a New York Post expose led to their suspension last year. The Post watched as a group of migrant teens got off an Avalo Airlines plane that arrived at the Westchester County Airport near White Plains at 9.25 p.m. Thursday. The group then boarded three waiting buses and drove off about 50 minutes later. One bus traveled to the Walt Whitman Service Area in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, just across the Delaware River from Philadelphia. After the bus pulled up at about 12.45 a.m. Friday, several teens disembarked, retrieved their bags from the luggage compartment, and left with adults who were waiting for them. 
The bus left the rest stop around 1.05 a.m. and continued south on the New Jersey Turnpike. The plane that landed in Westchester flew out of El Paso International Airport in Texas and made a stopover in Jacksonville, Florida. In October, the Post documented a series of similar flights to reveal how the government was flying migrant teens to suburban New York amid the ongoing humanitarian crisis at the border. Now, wait a second. This is what the government was doing. It's what the government was doing. The government of the United States was already flying migrant teens to New York City. And the Democrats were perfectly fine with Joe Biden doing it. They just don't like Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott doing it. Now, these teens were being placed with adults. But they were still going. The left is showing their hypocrisy on this. The, the open and tolerant left in their sanctuary cities don't want to give sanctuary to Hispanic illegal immigrants. They want Texas and Arizona to have to deal with it. This is actually uh, one, one of the, the tough problems here is these Texas and Arizona, New Mexico, even California to a degree, they don't have the money at a state level to continue to subsidize this. And the federal government essentially lets these people out, gives them a bus ticket and tells them to go wherever they want to go. So they're already going to places around the country. Uh, how do you think that an illegal alien winds up in your city far away from the border? They get on a bus and they go there. DeSantis and Abbott aren't rounding them up and forcing them to go. Had a Ken Burns, I love his Civil War documentary series, but he's one of those people who got broken under Trump. He was on CNN this morning comparing this to the Holocaust. They're not sending these people to concentration camps. Remember when Trump was president, you people accused him of operating concentration camps. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez so forcefully convinced crazies on the left that Donald Trump was running concentration camps. A man of the left attacked an ICE facility facility and died in the process got himself killed trying to firebomb an ice facility because he really believed we were running concentration camps and now you're upset they're not running the concentration camps they're sending them to your city you can't win with these people there's a solution to this, though. There actually is a solution. It's a solution that polling suggests has bipartisan approval. You may want to sit down for this. It, it doesn't seem obvious to a lot of people. Apparently, people in Washington haven't thought about it. There's an easy solution to this. Close the border. Close the border. I mean, it'll come as a surprise to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Neither of them have been to the border. Neither of them have witnessed what's going on there. Neither of them have bothered to show up in Texas and see the humanitarian crisis for themselves. They don't want to go. They want to live in deniable, plausible deniability. Biden's been putting people back in cages too. The very thing the left was outraged with under Donald Trump, he's resumed. And he's gotten rid of Title 42 now, or the, the, this uh, Title 42 prohibitions on them coming into the country, making them stay in Mexico. And as a result, even more are coming. We're at record-breaking numbers of illegal aliens crossing the border. By the way, this phenomenon is one of the reasons South Texas Hispanics are becoming Republicans. You can't say it's a bunch of racists down in South Texas doing this either. Uvalde, Texas, where the school shooting was, Uvalde, Texas, is one of the epicenters of housing illegal immigrants in this country. The city is 81% Hispanic. But the Democrats want to scream racism. Again, I'm not a fan of trolling in politics. Have some substantive policies, please. But the media has ignored the situation. The Biden administration has ignored the situation. Democratic mayors and Democratic states have said there is no problem. They've been in denial about it. And now Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott are making them realize the problem. They're busing people to their states, to cities in their states. 
They're showing them what Texas has had to put up with. And their response is to attack the Texas and Florida governors as racist as opposed to say, no, we didn't realize there really is a problem. We should do something about this. They don't want to fix the problem. Whether you agree with the theories that they want these people to come in to be new Democratic voters or you agree with the theory that they simply do not care. The reality is that there's a problem at the border. And the reality is if Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott had not engaged in these tactics, no one would be talking about the problem at the border except for Fox News and you and me. The reality is what they are doing forces the conversation. And the reality is that in forcing their conversation, they're showing the massive extent of the hypocrisy of the left that declares themselves to run sanctuary cities. And when those needing sanctuary come, they close the doors and say, we don't want the brown people here. The good white people of Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts are up in arms. The vacation haven of the rich white elite of America is terribly upset at the idea of all of these people showing up in their neighborhoods, overwhelming their resources. What do you think they're doing in Texas? And you don't care. You don't care. If you care about them overwhelming the resources in Martha's Vineyard, if you care about them overwhelming the resources of New York City, if you care about them overwhelming the resources, well, then you should care about them overwhelming the resources of Arizona and of Texas and of New Mexico and of even Southern California because it's happening there too. The greatest extent of it because of geography is coming through Texas. Texas gets more of these border crossings than the other parts of the southern border because of the way the other parts of the southern border are operated and the geography and where the Mexican cities are that they go to. But it's not just illegal aliens. It's fentanyl. Fentanyl is coming too. In many cases, the fentanyl is coming with those who are coming across the border who are being trafficked to themselves. Progressives on social media overnight accused Ron DeSantis of engaging in human trafficking by sending illegal aliens to Martha's Vineyard. The reality is human trafficking is happening, but it's happening at the American border. And the people who are accusing Ron DeSantis of it are turning a blind eye to it at the border because they don't care that it exists because it's not in their backyard. They're the NIMBYs of American politics of immigration. They don't want it in their backyard. They're perfectly fine to have it happen, just not in their backyard. And DeSantis and Abbott, through the politics of trolling, are exposing them. And so while I disagree with the overall drive in this country on both sides to just troll the opposition to make a point, it's about the only way this is going to get attention and probably the only way it's going to get solved and probably the only way to bring these blue state governors and mayors to the table to realize we have a real problem in this country when 8,000 illegal immigrants are crossing our border every single day and something has to be done to stop it. So good for DeSantis and good for Abbott for making this a national story.